This video was brought to you by DeepNote. More on them in a little. NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, had a massive year last year. In 2021, there were over $14 billion in sales on the largest marketplace for these digital assets, OpenSea. I'm sure everyone's heard of a story of someone flipping an NFT for like a thousand extra turn. Many celebrities have found opportunities in this space as well. And if the right person recommends a project, it could blow up overnight. Unfortunately, this has led to some major scams, pump and dumps, and otherwise unethical practices. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. There's very little regulation, if any, on what is a legitimate project or not. And there have been some pretty crazy and public cases of celebrities or social media influencers not disclosing that they've been paid to market certain NFT projects or even crypto projects. CoffeeZilla, another YouTuber, has some awesome content related to these scummy practices. If you're interested, highly recommend checking out that channel. While the public shilling of NFTs is a massive problem, we almost completely overlook the underhanded tactics that many NFT projects use to gain traction on the OpenSea platform itself. Stay with us as we unveil the dark truth that's causing a lot of distrust in the NFT communities. Most secondary sales of NFTs occur on OpenSea. This is the OpenSea website, it's what it looks like. On the platform, you can own NFTs by minting them, enlisting them, purchasing them, or being gifted them. Minting an NFT means you get in on the original batch. It means that you sign up for the project or you pay some set amount of money and you get a sort of random draw into an NFT pool. When you go to an individual's wallet, you can see what NFTs they own. And as of now, there's no obvious way to see which of these NFTs were minted, gifted, or purchased. To that point, people have no control over what NFT projects are gifted to them and which ones show up in their OpenSea wallet. An NFT project looking to grow rapidly could gift an NFT to a large public influencer like Gary Vee or maybe even like Logan Paul, snap a picture that the NFT is in this person's wallet and use it for advertising. Many projects are realizing that they could benefit from this. And as of now, OpenSea has no filter for if a NFT is purchased, gifted or minted in someone's unique wallet. This is really similar to what happened with BitClout last year. That company is being sued by many individuals for leveraging an influential person's name without permission in order to gain traction. In this case of NFTs right now, the current practice of gifting serves the same purpose but doesn't have any legal recourse whatsoever like the BitClout case actually did. My friend Avery Smith and I didn't like that people could be getting taken advantage from a system like this, and we wanted to see if data could be used to help solve this problem. Could we use our data science skills to understand the nature of whales in the NFT space? Could we also see if projects are legitimate or scams? And can we create a framework for more transparency on a platform like OpenSea? So the first thing we did was collect some data from the OpenSea API. We pulled data from around 10 of the most influential people in the NFT space. We wanted to see what projects they were involved in and what portion of their portfolio was gifted versus purchased. It's interesting to note that these whales, they might not necessarily have a negative incentive to prevent people from gifting them NFTs, right? If the NFT project does blow up, they're in really early, they get the value from having a free NFT. Right? Some of it, it might be bad for branding. For example, like Gary Vee, who's supposed to be in the know, who's supposed to have his, his hands on the pulse of what's going on. But for a lot of these other influencers, they're getting a really unique benefit of getting into these things early and for free. So that's just another wrinkle associated with this. So after a lot of data collection and cleanup, we were able to create a couple of visualizations that help paint a story of these NFT wallets. We looked at both the collection of wallets on aggregate and also did a deep dive into individual wallets. We looked at 14 different celebrity wallets and myself, not a celebrity, which collectively held just shy of 29,000 NFTs. Out of those 29,000, we found that 83% of them were gifted. We found the top 20 projects by number of the total NFT tokens held and made this heat map to illustrate what collectors own which projects. And you might be familiar with some of these names such as VFriends or Avastars, and that's because they're brand name projects ran by influential people in this space. Other project names such as the Cryptos is not nearly as familiar, although it does appear as if they're held by lots of people. And that's because this graph shows both gifted and purchased NFTs. We made equivalent graphs that filtered out all of the purchased or filtered out all of the gifted. So you could actually see what projects were the biggest scammers and what projects had actual real momentum. Looking at the purchases, one thing that might stick out is just how much pranks he buys. That guy buys so much. They buy so many different series and you see indicated by that purple vertical line, that they buy quite a bit. 
But we see some of the bigger, more famous projects on the list, such as Avastars, Fame Lady Squad, Doodles, and of course, CryptoKitties. The gifted graph does have some more nuances to it that require further inspection or industry knowledge. For instance, vFriends would indicate that Gary V was gifted many, when in reality, it is his own project and he's transferred them from one wallet to this wallet, and so is not really gifted. Rarible is a different NFT marketplace similar to OpenSea and hence is mislabeled in this data. But projects like the cryptos, they're real scams, okay? How can we say that with real confidence? So let's go ahead and do a deep dive into this project to see if there's any more signs that it might be a little bit of a scam. So let's go ahead and start with the art. I mean, I'll be the first one to say that not all NFT art has to be amazing and something that like is truly beautiful in your eyes, but I wouldn't consider this art anything super special. Next, we check their Twitter and they only have 39 followers, which is not a ton. I mean, I know I don't have a ton as well, but in the crypto space with so many bots, that's definitely not a lot. And lastly, their Discord only had 57 members and that is pretty low for an NFT project. The Discord also says that there's no set mint date and there's no set mint price. They don't have an official real website nor an official OpenSea account. So low Twitter, low Discord, no mint date or price, no website, no OpenSea account leads us to say pretty confidently that this project isn't going to be a bright blue chip one in the future, but we could be wrong. They could just be early and they could be developing everything and have incredible execution and make the cryptos a brand name project. But current signs indicate that there is not, this is more of a pump and dump, but there are even sketchier projects and people in the NFT space. Check out this Instagram ad that I was shown a couple days ago that actually used Gary Vee's likeness in it. And then if you click on it and you might think, wow, this looks like cool art and Gary Vee owns one and Logan Paul owns one, but notice that the mint counter at the top of the page, if you go ahead and refresh the page, you'll see that the whole mint count starts over again. And then you can notice that there's a little bit of a sketchy URL and these are red flags. And what this group has done is actually impersonate another project that actually has some legitimacy. And they're trying to get you to panic buy on their website and purchase fake NFTs. So if you went ahead and clicked buy, you wouldn't actually be buying into the real project, but just a knockoff. And as far as our data shows, neither Logan Paul or Gary Vee actually owns any of this project. It doesn't even look like it was gifted to them. So this screams huge scam. Going back to some of the analysis, I really like this tree map we made, which lets you see how many NFTs each wallet has and how much of each project they own. And if they bought into that project completely or had some gifted. Looking for a big yellow square will indicate a certain collector really backs that project strongly. For instance, with Gary Vee, you can see that Fame Lady Squad or Pranksy with NFT Worlds. We also created an individual section of the website where you can actually do a deep dive into one selected wallet and see the individual tree map or bar graph. This allows you to see what that person is actually supporting. For instance, we can go into Steve Aoki and see that he has a Bored Ape Yacht Club, a few V friends, an Oni Force, a Cool Cat, and a CryptoPunk. Avery and I are 3,000 miles away and we needed to collaborate on this project. We used DeepNote for all of our coding work and honestly, it was kind of like we were both sitting in the same room together. DeepNote lets multiple developers work together in a Jupyter Notebook-like environment that's very similar to using something like a Google Docs. You can both see when other people are working and you're able to leave comments, integrate a lot of incredible tools. And I honestly think DeepNote made this project go off for us without a hitch. I especially liked how easy it was to integrate with Google Drive and build that into our analysis. This let us both work from the same data set very easily. So to be honest, before this project, I had never even heard of DeepNote. But after using it for this video, I actually really like it. I teach Python to a lot of new data beginners, and I always recommend starting with a cloud notebook solution as it's just easier to get started. There's no setup and it's more intuitive. And honestly, I'll probably start recommending DeepNote now because of how easy it is to use and to share and to collaborate with. I loved seeing Ken work on the notebook at the same time that I was. And I loved how you could host files and multiple notebooks all in one place. I thought that was awesome and really enjoyed that feature. And there's even a pretty cool dashboard feature that I actually really enjoyed playing around with. I'm definitely going to be using DeepNote more in the future. Check out the link in the description to start using DeepNote today. DeepNote has a completely free tier, but for students and educators, you get access to the pro version for free. Don't forget, you can check out the analysis that we did on DeepNote itself. I've linked something in the description, and we also built a dashboard that I've linked to that's on my GitHub. The biggest issue for us was the quality of the data. While a lot of information can be stored on the blockchain, it appears that essentially all of it is input by people. There doesn't appear to be a standardization around NFT features for each new project. Good insight relies on good data, and clearly OpenSea isn't truly willing to democratize good data yet. And this is just a small sample of how data can be used to help regulate this industry. I'd love for someone to take what we've started and really run with it here. Thanks for watching and good luck on your data science journey.